Okay, greetings, brothers and sisters. Um, one of my viewers pointed out this was another indication of the year of the amateur. I was like, wow, how could I miss that? I usually forget about the year of the amateur. And I want to cover this a little bit briefly. And so the video I made two days ago, or yesterday here, but it'll be, uh, today's the 25th. I made it on the 24th, and this video won't be up till the 26th. Uh, but I um, received a message from YouTube that I was sharing revenue for the music that was in Don Lemon's crappy video. Um, the one that people were mocking the music, saying it was superhero music and the music would never stop and they thought it would stop and it wouldn't. He paid for that music. <laughs> he paid for the music that people were mocking, right? And he's just so amateur hour. And I'll get into what that means and why. Um, some of it. You know, part of it, he's mentally incompetent. But here he has the, you know, the carry, uh, the um, Candace Owen being fired. That's the video I talked about. And then this happened here. I want to show you these two, a little bit of this interview here. And then get into why he's such an amateur. So this one, did I make, make, did I make Elon Musk uncomfortable? Kerry Swisher and Don Lemons discuss. And so this is a blip of their interview. Do you think he was uncomfortable mm -hmm. sitting in front of a gay black guy? What? Do you think that's what made him uncomfortable? <laughs> like just... Do um, you think he was uncomfortable mm -hmm. sitting in front of a gay black guy? Uh, probably more gay than black, I would think. I hate to say that, but um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't of course, know. then don't answer because I don't think that's what... You know, he was giving very comfortable answers. I mean, the, be the beginning of the interview, he started off and throughout the interview, he was calm, and he gave very, very reasonable, rational answers. It was that the endless incompetence is what costs you your job, and that you attacked him for over an hour with goofy mainstream media, you know, just lightweight stuff, right? Like, it's just everybody could see it. And this, she, she sure, still certainly can't, because she's a guest on the show. Okay, so I, you know, had to go do some things, and I thought about, you know, this portion of the, the video here and Don Lemon ascribing Elon Musk being uncomfortable which he wasn't to his being a black gay man when that's clearly what wasn't going on now it's you know it's hard to understand what's going on with people because lots of times people don't even know what's going on inside of them in terms of their internal process and that's why there's you know, a multi-billion dollar therapy business, right? Because people don't even know what their inner dialogue is and the reasons they make decisions. They don't know why they're, you know, I mean, they don't, even with psychology, which is a flawed and limited dogma, right? Like people don't even know when they're lying or what makes them tick and things like that. But reading people is something that I do fairly well. You know, I mean, given the fact that you can, it's a, you know, it's it's a hard thing to really, end up doing completely but you can get a sense of why people do some of the things that they do but what was going on with the, with Don Lemon and Elon Musk was something for all of us who deal with this we know exactly what it is because when you are talking to somebody if you're a truther if you're someone who has freed yourself from your indoctrination and your you know the the system of the control system then when you talk to a sheeple, you talk to somebody who's a gatekeeper, you know, you just want to get out of that conversation, right? And Don Lemon is the ultimate sheeple and just, you know, a, a very shallow, he's like a, you know, a duck pa paddling on the, the surface of the ocean, right? He's not even, I mean, there's, there's no depth to his understanding of, you know, current events or what's going on in the world. And, you know, one of my viewers said that his, video the, the newest video he put up there about Candace Owen is um it's a lot like TikTok videos <laughs> you know like maybe you got a TikTok video editor or whatever it is but again it's there's no depth to Don Lemons or his skill base and Elon Musk said what he was upset about here's Elon Musk's um, statement about this his approach was basically just CNN but on social media which doesn't work as evidence of the fact that CNN is dying. Instead of being the real Don Lemon, it was just really former CNN chief Jeff Zucker talking through Don Lemon so lacked authenticity. 
And so that was, um, and this is what he said originally. However, like an enterprise, we reserve the right to make decisions. It says, Dilemma Show is welcome to publish its content on X without censorship, as we believe in providing a platform for creators to scale their work and connect with communities. However, like an enterprise, we reserve our right to make decisions about our business partnerships and carefully consider X decide not to enter into a commercial partnership with the show. But if you watch the interview, you could see that's what's going on. Because you know what it's like to talk to somebody like that. And you just want to get out of the conversation. And you don't want any further relationship with them. You know, when I talk to somebody about something that they know things about that I don't, like let's say it's about some knowledge I want about maybe fixing my tractor or a car or something, and, you know, I'm watching a video about it or whatever it is, right? I don't ask them challenging questions and, you know, talk to them things I don't know anything about, right? <laughs> and in this arena, you know, something I do professionally here, and I feel like I'm insightful in whatever it is, but I certainly know when I'm talking to somebody who doesn't know anything about it, and they're just clueless, and they're just regurgitating what they've learned from the mainstream system. And we all have people in our lives like that or people that we end up interacting with. Or you talk to somebody who's really stupid or low consciousness and you have no connection with, and you just want to get out of the conversation. There's nothing to pursue there, right? You don't want to, you know, hurt the person or, you know, you don't want to tell them your worldview. You know, I was talking to my mom when she was in her 90s and about some of the big events were happening. She was just talking about them, and I, I knew more than she did, and I could have informed her, but I'm like, what difference does it make that she realizes, you know, I mean, either she's going to agree with me, she's going to worry about me, or she's going to stress out about it if she thinks it's true. If she thinks it's false, she's going to worry, like I've gone off the deep end or something. And so wh why, why would I do that, right? You know, and there's a lot of talk in this interview with Carrie Swisher, that's coming up. Um, again, I already did these clips that you're about to see. And they're talking about not being able to be who you are as a gay person or a black person or any number of, you know, ways that people feel marginalized. But we as truthers, we're not allowed to be who we are. And because of our beliefs, I mean, Don Lemon himself went after us. I'll show you that clip. He went after anti-vaxxers. You know, we're not able, able to speak our truth everyone's like Don Lemons and people like that are calling for censorship for anybody who challenges the official story and yet they whine about their own demographics being mistreated right and so let me show you that clip here I think we have to stop coddling people when it comes to this and the vaccine saying oh you can't shame them you can't call them stupid you can't call them silly again yes they are the people who aided and abetted Trump are stupid because they believed his big lie the people who are not getting vaccines, who are believing the lies on the internet instead of science, it's time to start shaming them. What else? Or leave them behind. Be because they are keeping the majority of Americans behind. Okay, so they're going to get into the complaint about how their demographic is being harassed, right? But no one ever talks about the way that we're treated as truthers, and I don't consider myself a victim and I don't complain about it but I'm just pointing it out right because he's doing it there and so there's that um but here let's get into it let's show I'll show you what I'm talking about here I, don't I mean know. I Ant's having like, answer questions from some... I don't think he likes control beyond himself and okay. so it doesn't matter who's exerting it I don't think he much likes Joe Biden either right a white guy right yeah so <laughs> the, this analysis is riveting so I think he, he doesn't like anybody in a position of control of him because I think he probably had a youth. Now, again, not an excuse. We had a youth? Everyone's like, oh, we had a hard... He talked about it very briefly. I had a hard youth. Guess what? I had a hard youth, too. So I'm sorry. We all did. Like, to stop whining, you billionaire. Sorry to tell you, everyone has a hard... I like did, too. Many people, not everybody. You did, too? I, I never would have guessed, Don. Right? Yeah. You know... We all had... My, I just, uh, my youth was so hard. My youth was harder than your youth. I don't sit around. And one of the things that I think you did really well there, um, which could even be stressed more, was he was talking about we have to get over it. Like, we did get over it. He goes, well, you're successful. He threw that in. Did you hear him say yeah, that to you? Course. Well, you're, yeah. you overcame it. Like, why do we have to overcome it? Right. Like, why is this a tax? Why do I have a tax because I'm gay? Why do I have a tax because I'm a woman? Like, Because I'm a woman? Um, again... 
that isn't what he was saying. What he's saying is, you're saying that the system's rigged against you, and yet you're successful, right? Now, there is people who have more of an easier path towards success, right? People born in more affluent families, people born in you know suburbs and not in poverty, people born that fit more the mold of successful people. Sure, that exists in every society. It's going to exist no matter what. But oftentimes, those people don't have, you know, you see more and more that people who are successful are in some ways underprivileged or come from damaged situations. And they have a drive. I mean, immigrants will work harder, like I've talked before, because they come from harder circumstances. And people who grow up with privilege are usually entitled and have a hard time becoming successful. Oftentimes, like I've said, success isn't generational, right? You have a person who's successful in one generation and then their kids are, are bums or duds because they just don't have the drive. But you, you come from abusive situation or impoverished situation. And so, you know, the American system allows you to be successful even if you're not the, you know, whatever it is. That's what, Do that was uh, what he was saying, Elon Musk was saying, you know, you're successful, why are you complaining about this? You know, like he isn't complaining about his childhood and, you know, whatever he was saying, you know. He asked him a question, he said that, you know, what drives you? And he said that. Because oftentimes damaged people need material success to validate them. And it's uh, an obsession, right? Like Michael Jordan having an overactive drive for, to be competitive. It was a psychological issue. All these people who hoard resources, they're, they're psychologically messed up. We have to, we, we do overcome it, but why in the world do we have to? Like, why, why isn't it? It would be really nice if we were all judged on our character and our results, but that's just not the case. Okay, again, this idea, this narrative that, you know, um, everybody is has this on some level whether it's within their own demographic you know it's just you're going to have obstacles in life but anyways I just want to show you one more thing here then I want to move on from this but they're talking about right here hitting people like that well speaking of that in that vein Steve Bannon mm -hmm. let's talk about Donald Trump because um, he Elon Musk insisted to me that he never he is not going to give a single <laughs> dollar to the Trump campaign Roll soundbite. Okay. You recently met with Donald Trump in Florida. What did you guys talk about? Uh, I was at a dinner. I, I was not done. I was at a breakfast at a friend's place, and Donald Trump came by. That's it. So you didn't go there to meet him? I no. I went. Don Lemon showing his own show on his show. <laughs> Don Lemon has one show on his show, and he's talking about that show with this other show that he's making with this other woman talking about the show, right? This whole show with the woman, the interview is about his interview with with uh, Elon Musk, and he's failing. Like he doesn't, he's not getting views, and everyone thinks he's a joke because this is totally amateur hour. Went to a, a, a friend of mine's house, uh, and it said, it said Donald Trump's coming by for breakfast. Is that uh, just so you know? Like, okay, fine. What'd you discuss? I've, I I don't. Um. Let's just say uh, he did most of the talk. Again, he's not uncomfortable here. This does not look like a guy. This is Elon Musk actually relaxed. You know, he stutters more and he's more awkward. And he was less awkward in this interview than lots. I think it's because he's unchallenged by Don Lemon's mental incompetency, right? His incompetency as a journalist. Okay. What <laughs> what just, and, and the, the, the normal things he says. There was nothing particularly gr 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 groundbreaking on you, but... Uh, he, you know, uh, President Trump likes to talk, and so we talked. I, I, I don't recall him saying anything that he hasn't said publicly, uh, and that was it. It was just a breakfast. Did he ask you for money? He didn't. Did he ask you for a donation? No. Are you going to loan him money to help pay his bills? No. Not at all. Pay his legal bills. Look I at him go. Look at his. Look at the wheels turning. I'm not, I'm not paying, paying his legal bills in any way, shape, or form. And he did not ask you for money. And he did not ask me for money. So what do, you, what do you think of that? I know you think I should have followed up on who was at the breakfast. I but do. What did you think I, of I that? I texted you. Do you believe him that he's not going to give money? No. 
I don't know. I don't. He doesn't love giving money to politicians. He's not a Peter Thiel character. Okay, so listen to this. You know, listen. I mean, they're making it sound like it's a crime to give money to Donald Trump, right? The other guy's mentally incompetent. He's a, a snoozler, a sniffler, and groper. He said racist things, and he's been a lifelong politician. He's a dud. And you know, I'm not voting, and I don't care, and I don't know what's going to happen. In, in terms of which like which poison is going to take the country in which direction but they're all, the country is going to end up in the same direction and that's collapsed because it's inevitable right but that is whatever it is but he has every right to give money to Donald Trump it's not a you know just because you don't like it he's already pretty much stated he's he's anti Joe Biden anti Democrat uh, Elon Musk he's made his political you know, just because you guys think it's Donald Trump is the devil doesn't mean he is. And the majority of people don't think that way anymore. They don't think that Joe Biden is so much better than Donald Trump. Or like Donald Trump is like the disaster that Joe Biden isn't because we've already seen Joe Biden presidency. So they make it sound like, you know, these are this, these liberals who think they know so much more than anybody else and they're dumb. Like, this is stupid. You guys are like remedial minds and and your grasp of reality and your consciousness is so, um, like it's so amateur hour, right? In that regard. So I don't know. I think he will, he could direct, he really has an antipathy more than, a, he doesn't like Trump. He's told me that dozens of times. I mean, it was, you know, he's, I hate Trump. I've had cotton out of his mouth, you know, before when he was joining different groups with, at the beginning of the Trump administration. I can't stand him. He's terrible. We're going to stop him. The anti-gay and lesbian. Okay, stuff. so this is the whole thing, right? Um, but let me get into it. I'll switch over to a voice over here. You know, the thing about Don Lemon's being exposed, and I talked about, you know, he was a local, whatever he was. I'm sure I could find old video of him as a local news personality in Louisiana. And somehow he got on CNN's radar. There's local TV news all across the country. And some of those people end up becoming reporters or something for MSNBC or ABC News or CBS or you know CNN or Fox or whatever. And they make it into a national situation. And Don Lemons, for whatever reason, you know, whether he was a diversity hire or whatever, you know, I mean, they, they suck so bad over there, so it's hard to understand exactly what the motivation was for hiring him but you know it wasn't just it wasn't because he was great that's obvious and he's not very smart and he's not very he's clueless right but he you know did the his job over there and he was fairly popular and they decided to give him a hosting position at the 9 p.m hour which is prime time news right it's prime time kind of content and you know, he had to go from somebody who reads the news to giving his own opinion. See, these people are all news readers. And you can read the news competently. Like, I don't think he was necessarily competent at that, but he wasn't, you know, didn't expose his flawed thinking and his inability to understand or have a, any kind of a take that people would find interesting. And he says these things, you know, you see these ways that he expresses himself. And he's horrible at it because he just doesn't understand when he was asking the questions, the, the questions he formulated. And I don't know if he actually bounced those off of people like there was contributions from other people. But he sucks at interviewing. And when he gives a take, you're like, oh, my God, that's what you think? Like he can't even articulate and understand the liberal positions. And, you know, it's boilerplate stuff. And he can't even do a good job at presenting that. And that stuff's so remedial. But that's still okay, you know, that's still, he get, get away with it on CNN to whatever extent because his audience is dopey and CNN is remedial. If you see people presenting their points of view, you know, I can mock pretty much anybody on CNN and MSNBC because of their, you know, their limited bandwidth of what they're willing to talk about in terms of what's considered truth or reality. And everything else is some crazy conspiracy theory and they just, you know, they all suck to a certain extent. But when you come on the internet and now you have, you know, no filters and no whatever it is, I mean, there's certainly some filters, and you can just be yourself. And Don Lemon said he couldn't wait to just free himself from the shackles that CNN was playing on him and be able to speak his mind and, and tell his truth. 
and his truth is like <laughs> he's he's a clown right because that level of competence where you can say things that are interesting just based on your opinion and your you know point of view and your understanding and reading of situations right something that a lot of us here do competently and people tune in because they want to hear it they want to hear what our thoughts are at a there's people that come to my channel and like want to hear what I think about certain subjects when the story breaks, right? My interpretation of the events. And Don Lemon just doesn't have it. Like he's always been an amateur, but now it's exposed. The interview with Elon Musk and the follow-up about it and the way that he's presented himself, like he doesn't know how to basically be interesting or have, he doesn't have the ability to have, you know, interesting takes on whatever is going on or in life in general, because he's such a surface dweller. He dwells on the surface of things. But anyways, I want to move on to some other things. I'm going to make a, maybe a shorter video today. But this is, you know, clearly the year of the amateur, and you can check out my videos on my Apocalypse Now channel about Kate Middleton. I mean, that's obviously done purposefully. I, I would assume, you know, they're purposely doing amateur work to distract from something else or drive the narrative or whatever you know their motivation is but amateur hours like amateur the year of the amateur is in full swing i just want to add a few things to this uh, there's a little bit of a clip of charles barkley um in an interview with keenan thompson um on his king charles show <laughs> um you know just to show you where cnn is at but you know there's something the internet's done for us there's a lot of things the internet's done you know i've talked about the evils of the electromagnetic pollution, the Wi-Fi, I mean, it's affecting us all in ways that we don't even know about. And we all know about the addiction to screens and kids being on the internet for nine plus hours a day or whatever. I mean, just all of that stuff. And there's a lot of bad stuff with the internet. But what the internet has done is it's allowed you to connect with people like yourself. And it's opened up a level of understanding that's far beyond the extraordinarily limiting official story and the gatekeepers either the people who are just too remedial to go beyond the official story and or our gatekeepers you know they're i mean it's like they're neanderthals right or is a cro magna man which came first <laughs> the neanderthals came first the cro man cro magna man were the first modern humans that's you know i don't subscribe to Darwin's theory of revo of evolution but you see it in the you know the X-Men comic comic books where you have these mutants and you see this time and time again there was a couple of movies uh, there was a movie and a sequel on um it's a Canadian movie on Netflix where people who have powers have to be registered these people have these powers right and they have to be registered because you know when people get abilities when anything evolves, what you've evolved from is threatened by you. And so there is in my spiritual, you know, the spiritual um, uh, knowledge that comes with the Sajmark system, there's predictions about genetic mu mutations and the idea of human beings accessing some of their hidden potential and evolving into more spiritually and, um, you know, higher levels of consciousness. And we've seen this in the past. You know, those are saints, right? A saint is somebody who evolves and reaches the next level. And what's happened to saints in America and England and Europe and these countries, pretty much every place but India, you know, India, at least to its credit, I mean, it's a materialistic pit now and there's so much degradation there. But it's always been a country that celebrates its saints. But most countries around the world, most cultures kill their saints because it represents an evolution right and that's what the mainstream people the gatekeepers are doing they're trying to kill you destroy you mock you say that you're an abomination even though that you've cracked through and you've broke through to a higher level and the internet has helped a lot of us do that at least on a intellectual basis on a, a knowledge basis and so you know with cnn they're just so remedial and this woman, this Carrie Swisher talking to Don Lemons and saying that Elon Musk doesn't like being controlled, you know, again, not standing up for Elon Musk. I've talked about, you know, his, I mean, he's being 
you know, well, he's potentially a super villain. And Don Lemon is just a, you know, a clod, you know, just a clown. But, you know, in terms of what she's saying here, well, it's a controlled system. And they're trying to limit people's expansion into higher levels of consciousness. We've been lied to about everything, including the creation of our, you know, of our um, species, you know, uh, the, the origin story of the human race and things about this planet and spiritual knowledge that they're suppressing. And that's, you know, and that's why I get into religions, right? You know, was what I was saying about what it's like to talk to a, a you know, a um, sheeple as a truther, the same thing is it's like talking to a religious person when you've reached another level, which is called spirituality, where you're connecting to God directly, right? Where Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven lies within. That's him indicating he's moved to that level from being an ordinary religious follower to being a spiritual being. And when you become a spiritual person, even just a, a low-level spiritual person, you still, you know, it's really hard to talk to religious people because they're so limited. And you're going to threaten their very beliefs in existence, right? I mean, you can't talk to them because they're clung to something. They're clung to this control system. And so many people are clinging to this control system where there are people who are trying to break through and break free. And those people are labeled crazy or dangerous or terrorists or whatever it is because they're a threat to the control system. And that's what this whole thing's about, right? All of it. Like, it's just, there is an opportunity, and it's not just because of the internet, it's just the time that it's there where people can connect with other people like themselves and they can understand knowledge that's been there. You know, I, I've talked about how my brother was one of the original truthers. He had his own AM radio station, radio show. And um, he, uh, you know, came back from Vietnam, and there was this knowledge that was out there about the Federal Reserve and you know there was some it, it's not great as it is now like it's just it was the beginning of something but only a few you know selected people had access to that right because there was no internet I mean it was you know people with shortwave radios or underground newsletters or people that you would talk to and have conversations with and most of those people were fringe people like the character Mel Gibson played in the movie Conspiracy Theory and you know it wasn't I mean, it wasn't as developed as it is now. And the internet has allowed for that. But more importantly, you know, the expansion of a, a global travel and the, the consciousness shift that the hippie movement, and of course we know the hippies did a lot of damage in, in various ways, but it opened up things that environmental concerns that are, you know, very relevant and very important. It opened up an expansion beyond the world religions to spirituality, which is the biggest of all things, right? That's why I always say spiritual, only spirituality will save this world. Human beings to survive have to have a internalized relationship with God on a much deeper level than most people could even conceive of to where that God's guiding you through your life and you're making the right decisions and all the evils of, you know, alcoholism and abuse and bad decision-making will disappear because people will, you know, you'll have a society full of saints. Doesn't that sound like that would solve the problem, right? If you had a society full of saints, doesn't you, don't you think the world would be a lot different and better if everyone was on a higher spiritual level? So that, you know, I mean, it just makes sense. And that's the biggest thing to come out of this time of change is just a matter of whether people will embrace it or not. So let's return to the remedial here and listen to Charles Barkley with um, this guy from Saturday Night Live. We are your hosts tonight. I'm Charles Barkley. And I, and I am Gail King. And we're so, you know, there's nothing funny. I'm cutting out the very beginning, but it's, there's, no, there, there's these fake giggles, right? There's this laugh track. They haven't said one funny thing. The co-host of a real CNN show that combines our two names, King Charles. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's a fact. <laughs> that's Gail King. And that's Charles Barkley, and they've combined their names, right? The show centers around Charles Barkley. Because Charles Barkley is CNN, at T T TBS's greatest asset. He's their most liked, beloved figure. You know, he's funny to people, and he has a light sense of humor, right? And he does, you know, some funny things. I mean, he dresses up in addresses, which is funny to some people. And also which is funny to me, 
he gets arrested for drunk driving and when he's getting arrested for drunk driving he tells the cops well he was just going to see a prostitute that performed a sexual act on him that he never experienced you know as a married man he's talking about this to a cop <laughs> and that he was going to get this sexual act performed on him again and that was his his excuse to try to get out of the DWI <laughs> but um you know here's the Saturday Night Live failing at mocking him yeah I thought it should be gay bar <laughs> but then I was told that that was terrible yes terrible <laughs> well it goes without saying we love that sketch on Saturday Night Live when we saw it a, a few weeks ago although we did have a few new a few notes on that good thing though that Charles's alter ego is here we're very excited that Kenan Thompson is in the house. He's the longest serving SNL. Now, Kenan Thompson's probably the funniest person on Saturday Night Live, but that's not saying much. Because I think he's sort of a naturally funny person, but not like a he's not a stand up comic. And, you know, the sketches he's in, I mean, he might be slightly funnier than the rest of the people, but the show sucks, right? I mean, this is the whole problem with all of it the mainstream media. SNL cast member ever. The, one, the Washington Post, I love this description of you, Keenan, called you a sketch comedy savant. Oh, nice. He has been acting since he was a little kid on Nickelodeon's All That and Keenan and Kel, remember that, and the Good Burger movies. And if that isn't enough, he also wrote his first book. Do you mind if we mention the book? Please. He also wrote his first book. It's called When I Was Your, when I was your Age. Welcome to you, Keenan. Thomas. Thank you very much. What when, a, when what a says, pleasant intro. Good, give him, the, give him the book promo. Oh, thank you. Well, when it says man. the longest member standing, 23 years, you were the longest standing member of I'm Saturday in my Night Live. 21st, wow. but yes. Yeah, it's a, it's a long time. I mean, I, I can't even imagine where all that time went, honestly, because I still feel young. So both these guys are likable. You know, there's the likability factor. That's, you know, they're people who are just likable. The problem is that they're gatekeepers. Charles Barkley is very, um, you know, he really pushes the mainstream narratives. He pushed the boop, and he was very hard on the anti-boopers. And this guy, you know, is a so-called comedian with a platform, but they never really speak truth to power. You know, they they focus on being likable and therefore are trustworthy. And so they're kind of the most insidious gatekeepers. I used to talk about Tom Hanks like this. Certainly Ellen. You know, I talked about Ellen, Tom Hanks, and Will Smith. And they were the, the trustworthy celebrities who were also gatekeepers and weren't, you know, what they pretended to be, right? Young, you know. And you still look young. Yeah. But when you're sitting in front of somebody that you've done an imitation of them, mm -hmm. do you get a little nervous? Do you think, uh, <laughs> I hope they're not angry. You know, clearly he's not. <laughs> do you get nervous about that? Yeah, yeah, because we're not out to offend. You know what I mean? We're just You're not fun. out to offend? I'm not personally, no. Uh -huh. um, but some people strike you funny. As a comedian, you kind of have to be, especially in, in this day and age. Off being offensive is kind of what's, I mean, that speaking truth to power right now, you almost have to offend people. Like, I don't see any way to get around it. If you're going to actually speak truth, people are going to get offended because people are offended by the truth, right? And so, you know, you, you have a, a very specific tone. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you're a big presence what, what, on TV. Everybody what is his tone? You. Yes. It's just down in here. You know? <laughs> As it's just a very southern, baritonal. I'm a, I'm a very tall person, so that's how I sound. <laughs> I, I, first that's of all, how I sound. It's a tremendous compliment. It is. First and foremost. It's tremendous. But like. Like, he's not. A, this imitation sucks. Like, he doesn't sound at all like Charles Barkley. There are people who do Charles Barkley's voice great, and Keenan Thompson isn't one of them. From Washington, oh! D.C. <laughs> this this is a great place. First of all, it's a pleasure to have me here. It's an honor. <laughs> like I say, I've been doing this for many years, and I've been doing a, I've been doing this for a very long, and it's good to be appreciated. I was listening to y'all talk before I came on the air, and we didn't win as many awards as we should have. I'm spinning some industry secrets. Back to you, Ernie. <laughs> so that's you know that's a good impression of Charles Barkley. I've said this. <laughs> I had a couple of people call me who were hosting Saturday Night Live, and I said, it's the longest damn week of your life. Yeah, it is. How do you, it like, well, you've hosted it. I have, That's right. and yes. it's the longest week of your life. Oh, okay. Girl, yeah, yeah. you are rehearsing 10 to 12 hours yeah. every... Like, wh where, does all the, where does all this go? Single day. Really? How do you keep 
Like, because you're doing the same thing over and over. How do you keep your energy level? Like, if you're, you're rehearsing that many hours a day and you suck that bad, like, I mean, they have a week to prepare for a two-hour show and they write the comedy sketches. They probably have some ideas coming in what they know the host is. But some of the sketches are repetitive. But this is how, you know, if you're, it's almost like it's improv. It's so bad. <laughs> you know, and improv is probably funnier than Saturday Night Live. Double and you'll focus up working that hard every day. Number one is a dream come true, you know what oh, I mean? Oh, wait, wait, there's the two of you together. Yeah. Wait, wait, hold, it's a magic moment here. Yeah, that was a great That's one. That's the prison scene. Yeah. Straight. yeah, that was a great one. Um, number two is different for the host. The host has a lot of responsibility. Yeah. Like, we're there more in a, like, a supportive role. Um, third, I, I work with amazing people, brilliant people in the cast, in front of the camera, behind the camera. Um, you know, it's it's a several hundred people family, you know what I mean, that are trying to build something new every single week. And yeah, man. And you guys fail constantly. And so this is, you know, what I'm talking about, the gatekeepers, people trying to keep the status quo and, you know, mocking people who are, you know, against um, that belief, right? Here's Charles Barkley with Don Lemons, right? These two... Um, brilliant dudes who are, you know, uh, have a cutting edge understanding, slamming Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving, you know, a hero to many of us in terms of his standing up for what he believed in and also sticking to his guns and someone who's been proven right and lost millions of dollars. I mean, maybe up to $50 million or more, uh, maybe even $100 million in endorsements and contracts. He got a lesser contract. I mean, all these things, right? Kyrie Irving, who's been vindicated, and these are these two rocket science talking about him. An NBA analyst, Mr. Charles Barkley. Good morning to you, sir. I really appreciate you joining us. Of course, Don. Thank you. Thank you, guys, for having me. Why so outspoken, especially when it comes to this issue? You, you know, even as a someone who is you're covering sports, but you're speaking out about issues that have to do with culture and society. Why so outspoken about this? Well, I, I, Don, I don't like that word I've spoken because I hope anybody who sees racism in any form whatsoever should stand up, whether he, uh, it's against a black person, a Hispanic person, a Jewish person. This is when Kyrie Irving posted a video that he was condemned for and had nothing, you know, he didn't do anything wrong. He posted a video that's still up on Amazon. They didn't attack the platform. They suspended him for five games and they find him which ended up being about five million dollars he had, he got he paid five million dollars for posting a video link on twitter right uh, uh asian asian hate's going a big deal in this country right now so anybody should try to do the right thing if you see something wrong when it comes to race or homophobic or sexist you should always say something so I, and i'm always going to do that see something say something and I don't care about the repercussions. If I see something wrong... What about anti-vaxxers? What do you say about them? Do you, when they, I mean, he called anti-vaxxers a-holes, bunch of clips out there, things that he said, all these other people, Don Lemons. Wrong happening, Don. Uh, I'm going to say something. How do you think the league should deal with it? Because, it, listen, he's still on suspension, but how do you think the league should deal with it? The reason I ask is because... You know, everyone is speaking out about it. Kyrie Irving is facing, you know, what he's facing. Um, but the league let him go for a long time. They, they sort of are forcing him to apologize. But what if these are his real beliefs? Should they be dealing with that as well? Again, he, he tweeted a video that had lots of things in it. The same problem he had with Elon Musk. He, Kyrie Irving said he didn't agree with or believe everything that was in the video. The video had a lot. It's not a well-made video. I wouldn't endorse the video. You know, I, I like um, what Kyrie Irving has done, but he has every right to post a link to a video on Twitter that's available on Amazon, right? And it was up on YouTube for a while. I'm not even sure it got taken off of YouTube. I don't think it was considered hate speech. I mean, they could have went after Amazon and asked Amazon to delete the video, and Amazon said they wouldn't because they didn't, you know, it was a person, you know, the, the belief of the video is that black people are the original Jews, I mean, that's, you know, part of it. And that's what Kyrie Irving and lots of people believe, that they were the original people were black that were referred to 
in the Bible. Maybe they were more Middle Eastern, I don't know, right? But either way, right, that's his beliefs, and he's entitled to them, and he's entitled to post a video. It might have things in it that aren't great, but he wasn't posting those clips, and he wasn't referring to those clips. And he said, I don't believe everything that was in the video. But again, you know, if you thumbs up something or like something or like somebody's post and that person has posted something else somewhere else that has been condemned, right? You liked a post that was fine or whatever people weren't upset about. But then that same person wrote something or did something somewhere else. And now you're on the hook for something they did just because you liked something else that they did that was okay, right? And that's crazy. <laughs> like, it's nuts. I mean, that's how bad the internet's become, the level of scrutiny that it doesn't follow any logical sense, right? Because no two people, I mean, people say this all the time to me, I don't agree with everything that you say. And I'm like, well, why are you even saying that? Right? Because of course you don't. Like, I don't agree with everything I say. <laughs> you know, there are things I go back and watch old videos and I'm like, oh, I don't believe that anymore or whatever it is, right? I mean, it's stupid to, you know, think that way. You're not going to find two people who agree with everything identically that doesn't you know it's not possible and that would be wrong like that's just they want some kind of uh, borg mentality right where everyone has the same point of view like the matrix and some you know hive mind and so anything that you post that is somewhat controversial they try to you know censor you even though you've said nothing you didn't say anything about the the offending remarks right like this is the the cancel culture, he's been canceled, right? And Charles Barkley's on his network now, just being a gatekeeper and being stupid. Okay, so there's one more thing I'm editing, and I was reading through the comments, and people mentioned that I passed 100,000, uh, I passed 1,000 subscribers on my new channel, which is great, thank you. The views are there, they just haven't counted them. There's a week delay, but whatever. So I can get that channel monetized, that's great. Uh, the other thing is that people were saying that his one video was edited for TikTokers. Like that, you know, the, the colored writing where as he's talking, the, the word lights up in a different color and it's big subtitles. That's a TikTok thing. And they're pointing out other ways that this was a TikTok video. So Don Lemons, and again, I'm just sticking this in here because I, I want to move on from him as much as possible. I might come back in a couple of days or a week or so, but... I don't want to have to make another video, you know, tomorrow or the next day. But he's trying to get TikTokers at a younger audience, and there's no way. Like, <laughs> like they're just, I mean, he, he, there's no audience that's there for Don Lemons, but certainly the young people aren't going to be about Don Lemons, right? He thinks he's cool and, you know. Well, maybe they have someone who actually believes these things. I'm not saying it's right. Instead of forcing him to apologize, maybe they should be dealing with that that part of it. I said that's a great question, uh, Don. People have the right to feel and say what they want to. We have freedom of speech, but there are repercussions when you say certain things. Uh, let's like, look at the, the picture they, they give of Kyrie Irving here. Listen, I don't know Kyrie, Again. Kyrie Irving. I don't know if he's a good guy or a bad guy. I think he's been suspended, rightfully so, and I think he should come back and play in the NBA. But, you know, that's a really slippery slope because, you know, people always talk about freedom of speech, freedom of, 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 of effect, or you say whatever you want to, but there are repercussions. I mean, and he, he's paying for that right now, but... No, he posted a tweet. That's all he did. Of a link to a video. That's not anything. Like, you, you know, the fact that these guys just caved... Charles Barkley is a gatekeeper. And they're just not smart, right? He's just not, you know... I mean, he's not able to I mean he's really a mainstream person and all the people on uh, his show inside the NBA I was looking for those different quotes and things and they were all slamming Kyrie Irving for not playing and they were all saying how great the bloop was right and of course we know now that Kyrie Irving has been vindicated I mean we know it and they, they refuse to admit it and what Don Lemon said and all these people so they're gatekeepers and they're there, you know, as a lower level of consciousness, keeping the sheeple, you know, feeling like everything's safe and it's not, right? Because people are ascending. People are ascending past the remedial points of view and all these things. And the gatekeepers and all these people can't, you know, can't contain it. There's, there's a loss of control here.
And the sheep on the gatekeepers are freaked out about it. The thing about this is, like I was saying, we don't know a lot about our true origin story, our true history. And we're lied to by both science and religion and the powers that be about the origin of our species and the nature of life on planet Earth. I mean, information is being withheld or it's been forgotten or it's just not known, right? But Kyrie Irving and people who people of color who believe that they were the original Hebrews. Certainly the original Hebrews were dark-skinned, just like Jesus was, right? So when they started to sell Jesus' teaching to people in Europe, you know, you're in England or you're in, you know, some of this, these, um, these European countries, Germany and all these other countries where they're fair-skinned people. And they're saying, well, this is the only son of God. This is, this guy's, you know, He's the only son of God. Oh, what do you look like? Oh, he's a black guy. No, they wouldn't say that, right? They're going to tell the people, oh, he looked like you did, right? They're going to describe what they knew as a... I mean, many of those people had probably never seen a dark-skinned person in their life. You know, you're not going to say he looked like a Middle Eastern person because they wouldn't even know what that meant. But that's the region in which Jesus was. And that's the region that the original Jewish people were, right? They were, you know brown to to black skin. I mean, they look like people who live in that region now. It hasn't changed that much in 2,000 years. People aren't going to identify with somebody who doesn't look like them. Most people. Like, most people can't see beyond the superficial aspects of a person and can't look at the soul. And people like Kyrie Irving are saying, you know, they had to, they had to play with white Barbies and white G.I. Joes and white, you know, whatever it is, right? They're constantly told that white people are superior in some way or their skin color and their, you know, whatever it is, isn't um, recognized and there isn't as much products, there isn't much literature and that's why they're pushing for all these things like Black History Month, right, and uh, Gay Awareness, Awareness Month and all these things, right? But, you know, the really marginalized group right now is people who don't agree with the official story. Like we are definitely not recognized as human beings right (laughs) like you can see it by everything that they push on us and there's this fear of people evolving out of the control system and evolving out of the you know limited nature of human beings and that's what's on the table in the Saj Mark system of meditation it talks about a a raise in consciousness that will not only affect human beings but also animal species that there'll be, you know, a a movement upwards in consciousness level on all levels of experience in terms of human life and animal life and everything on this planet is going to raise up to a higher level, a higher vibratory level, higher consciousness level, and become saints. And that scares people. You know, what I've learned from spiritual practice is people are really scared of the darkness within them. They're really scared of, you know, the beast inside of them, the potential, you know, person that comes out and, you know, the beast that comes out of people in very stressful circumstances, wars and things like that, right? They're scared of their dark side. But as much as they're scared of their dark side, they're really more scared of the divinity within them. Your ego is terrified that it's going to lose control of your, you know, everything, decision-making process and all the rest of it. And the people that control the system are worried that They'll lose, they'll lose control of not only themselves, but everything. And so people who are, their consciousness is going in a, you know, evolutionary direction, spiritually and, you know, first of all, but, you know, all of it, are a threat to the system. And we are being, you know, marginalized no matter what our demographics are, right? More than anybody else. It's like the, you know, mutants or whatever. It's like the, you know, Cro-Magnum trying to, prevent the rise of the Neanderthal and so this is you know this is what's up right now more than anything else in terms of marginalized groups the other part of this is you know if Kyrie Irving wants to believe the original Jews were blacks he completely can right I mean that's his prerogative because the truth isn't there and people have to grasp for the truth like I was saying but then they take Don Lemon and Charles Barkley two you know people of color who are going to disparage Kyrie Irving, right? Because, you know, white people would be maybe accused of being racist or whatever. So, you know, they're really sellouts on top of everything else. On tops of being shills, on tops of, 
of being remedial and being limited, they're also selling out their own people, right, to whatever extent. I mean, it's they're the worst of the worst. You know, shills, gatekeepers, and sellouts, oh my, right? Only spirituality will save this world. It's Paul Romano definitely pointing for the apocalypse and the ascension. Everyone have a blessed day and be grateful.